Welcome to Adobe InDesign. In this lesson, we will cover working with objects, and we are now in lesson four. For today's objectives, we are going to work with layers and as well as get acquainted with using smart guides. So, in this lesson, we'll work on a four page newsletter. We will add text and images and make several modifications to the objects in this document. So to ensure that the preferences and the default settings will match in the program in this lesson, we need to reset some settings because we actually modified something from the previous lesson. So we'll make sure that we get the default settings. So go ahead, click Windows menu, workspace, and we'll be able to see the reset advanced uh, workspace in there. All right, let's work with layers. I believe uh, many of you are already familiar with layers from other, from previous Adobe applications. But in this lesson, we will focus on how layers work in Adobe InDesign. Although they just uh, work similar similarly with other applications in Adobe. So placing objects on different layers lets you organize them for easy selection and editing. In the layers panel, you can select, display, edit, and print different layers individually in groups or all together. The layers panel displays a list of a document's layers and lets you create, manage, and delete layers. So we'll go ahead, choose the window menu, and click layers to activate uh, the layers panel. So this is now our layers panel. It's just actually below the pages panel where we uh, have discussed last week, last, last lesson, in the previous lesson, we tackled about the pages panel. So today we will discuss more on the layers. So the layers panel also lets you display the names of all objects on a layer and show, hide, or lock individual objects. If you click the triangle to the left of a layer name to alternately display and hide the names of the objects on the layer. So in this particular lesson, there are two layers and we'll select the, the text layer to make it active. And the pen icon indicates that this layer is the target layer and anything we import or create is placed in this layer. The eye icons, let's you hide or display individual layers, as I have encircled in green there. When you turn off the visibility of a layer, the eye disappears. So click the empty box again to display the layer contents. Now we are going to use the zoom tool to zoom in this particular section of the page. So the zoom tool is somewhere here and we'll adjust to this blue background in our in our workspace so we're actually maximizing our page to about a hundred and forty percent so the next thing that we need to do is use the selection tool all right, let's click that small triangle beside the text layer and we'll be able several we'll be able to see several objects in this layer. And I would like to particularly select that yield.ai lay um, object because that's actually the active object that you can see in the in the page. And in the text layer, the blue um, point is active beside the pen and if you notice on top of the blue dot there's an empty dot so we are going to actually move the yield AI in that uh, in that 
layer, the graphics layer. All right, so let's go ahead. If you click the yield AI and drag it to where I encircled the thread, there's actually a hand icon. So that's actually in the graphics layer. All right, so I have dragged the yield AI layer. Now, inside the text layer, the yield AI is gone. And you can see that the empty dot a while ago is now turned red. That's actually in the graphics layer. So that basically means the yield AI image is inside the graphics layer now. All right, so the gra I have opened the graphics layer. As you can see, it's inside the graphics layer. So we need to lock the graphics layer. Just click that. Um, there's a button beside the graphics layer and lock that layer. So we are going to click the view menu and fit page in window. Next, we will make a new layer and move the existing content to it. Uh, we'll see what we can do here. So this is the new create new layer icon inside the layers panel. So go ahead, click on that one. After you click that one, you, you'll be able to see there's that layer three icon added on top of the graphics layer. So we'll go ahead, double click that layer to rename it. So we'll name it, um, okay, this, this layer options dialog box will come out and we can rename it from here. So we'll name it background and then we'll just simply click OK. And we'll drag our background layer at the bottom of the graphics and text layers. So, so far we can uh, choose file and save what we have done about the layers panel. Now let's move on to using smart guides. Smart guide features gives great flexibility in precisely creating and positioning objects. With smart guides, we can snap objects to the edges and centers of other objects to the vertical and horizontal centers of pages and to the midpoints of columns and gutters. So to enable smart guides in those who are using Mac, you will see the InDesign CC menu and the preferences, then just go to guides and baseboard. Those who are using Windows, you will see it in the edit menu preferences and guides and pasteboard so once we click the one we will have the same preferences dialog box so i have encircled there we are ac the active um, preference is guides and pasteboard and there are actually smart guide options and there is four of them so we'll discuss them one by one First is the Align to Object Center. This actually causes object edges to snap to the center of other objects on a page or spread when we create or move an object. The next one is the Align to Object Edges. This causes object edges to snap to the edge of other objects on a page or spread when we create or move an object. We also have the smart dimensions. This causes the width, the height, or rotation of an object to snap to the dimensions of other objects on a page or spread when we create, resize, or rotate an object. And lastly, we have the smart spacing option. This will quickly arrange objects so that the space between them is equal. So with the smart guides, we can snap objects to the edges and centers of other objects, to the vertical and horizontal centers of pages, 
and to the midpoints of columns and gutters. So here's a uh, uh, quick information about smart guides. We can turn smart guides on or off. And at the same time, we can... The smart guides are also enabled by default in Adobe InDesign. So with smart guides, we can... S uh, all right, let's get familiar with activate the guides. So go to view menu and we have the grids and guides, then show guides. So let's give it a try and see how smart guides work. First, we'll click the uh, file, new, and click the document. And we'll choose the rectangle frame tool that's in the tools panel. And we are going to add um, rectangle frame. I have actually dragged it there. You will see that the width and the height are active so go ahead uh, if click the left margin guide and drag to the right as the pointer move across the page notice that a guide is displayed when the pointer reaches the middle of a column the midpoint within a gutter and the horizontal center of the page so release the mouse button when smart guide appears and you will be able to see we have the rectangle frame is created after we release the mouse button. In an empty area of the page, create we'll create another one and with the height or width of the new object equals the height or width of either of the two objects. A vertical or horizontal line with arrows at both ends appears next to the object we're creating and the object with a matching height or width. So if another rectangle frame is created after the mouse button was released. And those were the quick steps in showing smart guides. We'll just go ahead without saving them. So hope we learned something today about creating layers, and showing smart guides. Thank you. That ends our lesson.